Airbnb as a bond alternative. Huh. Interesting. Hear me out here. I'm going to show you my blog post I just posted while I was uh, chasing my puppy. <laughs> so he gave a treat so I can do this video. I'll put a link in the show notes. This is from my blog, Heritage Wealth Planning. You'll see a video I did. Oops, I got to get rid of this part right here. But you'll see a video I did. I posted on there when I was uh, going for a walk. All right. Airbnb is a bond alternative. Um, this is a... Uh, hey, let's just read it. What do you think about rental real estate? I recently did a live stream with old Fritz Gilbert of the Retirement Manifesto where we discuss rental real estate. Fritz paid $200,000 for a house in Blue Ridge, Georgia around 10 years ago while he was still living in the Atlanta area for work. To his surprise, he was able to rent out the house 200 days of the year via Airbnb. Other than spending about 10 hours a month to maintain the listing, the rentals paid for his house plus provided extra income. Now, Fritz and his better half, Jackie, are living in the house full time after having retired and escaped the city. And it's because of old Fritz and his wife, Jackie, his better half, uh, because they're very active in the uh, rescue dog uh, area that we have old Finney there because we went up to visit him, Charlotte and I. And uh, <laughs> my hair is all messed up. Sorry. I don't look like my normal, beautiful self. Uh, Fritz's, experiences, uh, Fritz's experience really got me thinking. Bond rates remain at historic lows with no reason to think they'll increase anytime soon. Bond interest is, always, is also fully taxable as ordinary income. So I wonder if it'd be superior investment to move your bond funds to rental real estate. Let me get my, I have my calculator here. Yes, right here. Sweet. All right. So think about this. If you're getting 2% on a bond and right now the 30-year treasury is at 1.67, after taxes and inflation, you're actually losing money. I've yet to meet anyone who invests with the purpose of losing money. So, assuming you're investing to make money, seems maybe bonds aren't the best bet. Now, of course, there is no guarantee real estate, especially rental real estate, will appreciate either. However, historically, real estate has increased by the rate of inflation. Yet the appreciation of real estate is free from tax until you actually sell the property, whereas the interest you receive from bonds are taxed when you receive the interest. Interesting, no? And price appreciation of real estate compounds where the interest on bonds is simple interest. Over a long-term investment time horizon, the difference between simple, I got a typo there, simple and compounding interest becomes huge. Let me explain. Inflation is compounding. What costs a dollar today will cost a dollar and 22 cents in 10 years at a 2% inflation. With 2% simple interest, though, what costs a dollar today will only cost a dollar and 20 in 10 years. If you look at the same from the opposite perspective as an investor, what is worth a dollar today will be worth a dollar 22 in 10 years with 2% compounding interest, but only a dollar 20 with 2% simple interest. But it gets even worse for bonds because not only are you receiving simple interest, it is also taxed at receipt. Let's say you're in a 25% tax bracket. If our above example, you're only netting one point in our above example, you're only netting 1.5%, not 2% because you have to pay the 25% tax on 2% interest you receive. So after investing for more than 10 years or for investing for 10 years at 2% tax at 25%, you only got a buck 15. Your investment in real estate is worth 46% more than your investment in the bond. And that's not including tax benefits that go along with being in the rental real estate business, nor does it actually include the ability to use the, the place to vacation if you so desire. Oh, and don't forget, you might actually have received some income from renting it out too. Secondly, when it comes to housing, why do you think the prices are so high? Well, well, mortgage rates are one thing, I get that. But the other thing, though, is a lack of supply. It's not like contractors are throwing up houses all over the country every single day. There's a vast shortage of housing across this land. I know a lot of people are like, oh, those people are they're building all over the place. There is not enough supply to meet the demand. I'm just telling you, ask anyone. The supply is limited. Demand is still, I mean, because low mortgage rates, I don't care, but the demand is high. Supply is limited. As such, that's driving the price of price. That's driving the cost. Then you have to think about the regulations too. More regulations, the more expensive it costs to build, the less people can afford to buy the home, and as such, the less supply there will be. <coughs> Basic economics. Less supply without a correlated decrease in demand leads to higher prices. Oh, and don't forget, people still have to live someplace. Essentially, a 
a fixed demand of if you have a human being, they got to need a place to live, if that makes sense. So it's a very inelastic, is it elastic or inelastic? I can't remember which one it is. Elastic, I think it's inelastic. No, it's an elastic. That means, that's right, elastic stretches. That means you can change the price a lot. It won't change much. You can change the, uh, the price, but it doesn't change the demand because people still need a place to live. Now, here's where it gets interesting for those folks who have bonds as part of their investment portfolio. How many people actually have the cash flow to buy rental real estate? In this day of insane lockdowns, where it seems our government's intent is making us all rely on universal basic income, there'll be less and less people who have the resources or income to buy second homes. That means there'll be less competition for you in purchasing decision, in your purchasing decision. And that could lead to a potentially great buy. And who knows? Maybe it could be like Fritz and Jack and let your tenants pay for your property by Airbnb. I got another typo there. All right, so you can see I missed a couple Airbnb. I got a couple things to fix here. Be careful. This is why I'm doing this video so I can kind of read it while I'm uh, uh, do the video, which helps me read it out loud so I can go back and fix the typos. Be careful, though, because some states limit Airbnb businesses, especially in a community dominated by owner-occupied residents. If that's the case, you might buy something today only to have the rug pulled out from underneath you. You've got to be diligent in your research. What, when the Airbnb people dominate the neighborhood, you'll be fine. This is why you have to be very careful. Know whether the location you live in or the neighbors are okay with short-term rentals. If you have some cash flow and can find an opportunity for, say, 200000 bucks and put half down and take a $100,000 mortgage for the rest, this business opportunity may cost you approximately 500 bucks a month. Based on the numbers... Ooh, pot tea. Uh, based on the number, it seems like rental real estate could work like a charm. All right, so I, I, look, I'm not, I'm just thinking out loud here, and I put it on a blog. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just thinking, hmm, for 500, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh pot, oh, Penny, hold on a second. thought he was getting ready to take a, a leak on my carpet. Not that he's never done that before. He's actually a good boy. He's starting to go out. Uh, what a nugget. All right, but anyway, I'm not an expert in rental real estate. And if you watch that video and you watch the live stream I did with Fritz, which I linked to, um, I don't know anything about it. Look, I'm just not that handy of a guy. But I started thinking, well, it's, you know, hundred thousand dollar mortgage, five hundred bucks a month. Two hundred thousand dollar mortgage is a thousand bucks a month. I mean, if you got that kind of income, or you got that kind of money to put down, it's sitting in a freaking low interest rate bond. I don't know. It just seems to have some value added there, right? And people need a place to live. The demand for housing isn't going down. The supply isn't keeping up with the demand. As such, the prices are going up. And historically, rental, or not rental real estate, real estate has increased by the rate of inflation. And that's compounding, as I just said. Inflation compounds on the last year's inflation rate. So one is a dollar today, is a dollar one tomorrow, is a dollar 2.1 the next day, a dollar 3.2 or something like that. That's how it works. Anyway, love to hear your comments. I've never been involved in rental real estate. If you have some thoughts, uh, put them in the show notes. Uh, share with us what your thoughts are. All right, thanks.